Yeah, yeah. So so the six rules of productivity came like someone asked me, a friend of mine, Chris Ducker, said, I need you to put together a presentation. I need it to be succinct. I need it to be impactful. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned this idea of the six, which is this program that I have, uh, which basically gives you uh, six ways to approach your your day, um, your week, mm -hmm. your month, et cetera. And interestingly, he interpreted that as, oh, so there's six rules to productivity. And when he said that to me, I'm like, well, let me let me sit back and, and, and take a look at this. And and as I as I went through it, I'm like, you know what? When it comes to the work I do, there really are like six core rules that mm -hmm. that I think if you follow any and or all of them, and it's like anything else. This is related to time crafting as well. And you know this, Miriam, mm -hmm. is is the more you layer, the more impact it's gonna have, right? So yes. I think what happens with a lot of people. And I can I've seen this when I've worked with and, and spoke with people in the organizational space as well, is when you try to do too much all at once, the whole house of cards collapse. You get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. The very thing that you're trying to do <laughs> to eliminate rather ends up yeah. getting, you know, accentuated. So I thought about this and I, and I wrote down, you know, kind of the entire time crafting framework and it does break down really to, to six rules. So, um, oh, you know, fantastic. I mean. It, it, that's kind of how it came to me and, and I've been presenting them regularly. And what's great is with most people that I've talked to, uh, again, the more rules they add, the better, but there's always one that they go, Oh, Oh, Oh. And then as, as soon as they get that, all you also mm -hmm. needs is that one spark and it, yeah. and it it gets the fire going. Right. Yeah. It's like Decker telling you there's six rules, right? Like it's, so obvious we don't see it ourselves when we're the creator of it sometimes. Right. It's the it's the yeah. gaps. Right. And that's one of the reasons why I like working with group coaching and stuff as well. Like, I mean, even though I've worked mm. with hundreds of one on one, I've worked with like more than that when it comes to group stuff, because um, you get that feedback from people because you can't see all the all the gaps. And when you're so close to something, mm -hmm. like you said, sometimes you miss out on things. That's also why when you start teaching this stuff, you need to work from that beginner's angle as opposed to, oh, here are all these things I've learned over the 15 years I've been doing this. Right. Yeah, it's so critical. I um, there's a study where they took scientists in different fields and they put them into mastermind groups. And when they would get together and talk amongst themselves and kind of present to each other, they got so much better feedback and so many more breakthroughs because someone from outside their field, but understanding the scientific process could see the the blind spots. And so yeah. it's all, it all is starting to play to how our brains actually process information. And I found, um, we're, we're going to be talking about this a little bit more, but what I found is sometimes there's that one piece that's missing. And once you find that kind of threshold or keystone concept, the rest of it all falls into place and then it all makes sense. 